in this video, I'm gonna open up my playbook to you and show you exactly what you can do to come out with the win at the end of 2020, fourth quarter. And these are lessons that I got by watching the recently concluded NBA Finals. Here are some takeaways that I got that you can relate to your business and apply and execute so that you can still come out with the win. So stay tuned. So the NBA Finals have concluded. This video was supposed to go out about a week and a half ago or something like that, but it is what it is, right? Um, but what I try to do in life, in everyday things, I try to get lessons that I can apply to life and to business, right? And that includes, yes, yes, watching NBA basketball, among other things. So I'm going to share with you some steps a playbook that I developed, right, based on watching the NBA basketball and how I can apply it to my business and how you can apply it to your business so you could still come out with the win in 2020. So if that sounds like stuff that you'd be interested in, then definitely subscribe. So takeaway number one is to come up with a plan, be clear on the plan, stick to the plan, but still maintain a bit of flexibility. You know what I mean by that? I mean, sound like I'm contradicting myself. I'm not hear me out so days before a game the coaching staff the players and whoever the other stakeholders they would meet and they would come up with this general game plan this this huge game plan right on past plays that they executed that was successful um, based on watching film you always hear lebron and some of the other players and coaches talking about watching film after the game they spend a lot of time watching reels and highlights of of plays that they would have made before to determine how they're going to strategize to be able to come out with the win in the next game. So watching film of a competition is definite, definitely helps them to get that leg up to get the leverage to be able to come out with the win, the result that they're looking for in the next game. Now during the game, depending on where they are, they will have timeouts and stuff and they would then decide where they are going in terms of a sub game plan so they would pull out the playbook and they would execute plays based on where they are in the game so are they up and trying to maintain a lead or are they up and trying to increase the distance between them and the competition or are they behind and trying to close the gap it depends on where they are in the game especially in the fourth quarter fourth quarter is crucial how are they going to close out the game what strategies are they going to use from the playbook that they're going to use to close out the game and come out with the win. Now, what does this have to do with business? So, we are in the fourth quarter of the year 2020. Now, 2020 was good for some, but horrible for most. Most wish that it were over. But the game, the game plan that you don't want to execute is giving up and saying that you'll start fresh in 2021. We still have a little time to go. We still have a fourth quarter to go through. Don't give up yet, but come up with a strategy that can still help you come out with the win. Now, your game plan may come from past experience, your strengths, you look at the quarter and you see where you are based on your core strategy or your core game plan that you made um, early on in the year. Or if you didn't make one, you, you you want to now make one based on where you are currently. And here's what the game plan is gonna look like. So what you wanna do is take a couple of days. Now we are already halfway in the first month of the last quarter, but we still have some time. So you wanna take a couple of days, slow down, all right? Assess where you are, take stock of where you are. And you want to ask yourself the following questions. What am I gonna sell for the next couple of weeks coming to the tail end of 2020 so that I can still come out with great results and gain momentum to head into 2021. What am I going to sell? Question number two is who am I going to sell it to? Who am I going to sell what I choose to sell to? And this might be based on what the markets are saying, what your current audience is saying, and looking at taking stock of where you are now. If you're not seeing the results, you may have to relook your financial plan, etc. Then you want to determine why. 
why do you want to sell? Now, if your reasoning is shallow, then it's not going to be sustainable. You may come out with a good results at the end of 2020, but it would not be sustainable. So you want to look at a deeper why. Why do I want to sell this thing? Why do I want to sell to the person that I choose to sell? Or the persons or the companies or whatever is the case, whatever is your business model. Then lastly, you sit and you think and determine how. You brainstorm, you come up with a couple of plans, you discuss it with your partners or whatever is the case, your teammates, and determine the how. How are you gonna execute the, the game plan, the plays for the rest of the fourth quarter? Takeaway number two is remember the fundamentals. Now, when a player comes out of high school or, or comes out of college, right, they would have had some type of basic training. So basic shooting, basic dribbling, the basics of, of passing. They would have some, whether they have gone to, to coaching camps or based on the coaching and the training that they would have got, they would start with the fundamentals. And then a little later on in their career, they start adding their own style and their own flair. And then, then they would develop their own game. Right, but the, the thing is they start with the fundamentals, they start with the basic. Now what would happen as we go along in business, we would business may start to get we try to make business so complicated. And the whole thing of serving others and making money in the process so complicated. Right? What we may need to do in this fourth quarter where we we have some time but not, not much time because three quarters are, has already gone and maybe you're not where you're at. What I would recommend is that you return to the fundamentals. Make it simple, right? The game plan that I recommended before, that I suggested before, the, the what am I gonna sell, who am I gonna sell to, why am I gonna sell and how, make it simple. Revisit something that worked before. You want to come out with the win, there's no time to get fancy. Flesh out some, some particular method that, that is simple right especially for the limited time that we have and seeing that corona may have have um hampered you a bit corona is here <laughs> corona is here to stay for a little while so you need to adapt you need to adapt but start with the fundamentals revisit the basics learn basic skills that can help you whether it's sales or marketing or whatever is the case to help you st to still close out with the result that you're looking for so my next takeaway from the NBA finals relating to business is teamwork. Now, now basketball is a team sport, right? And watching how the, the team players relate to one another and how much they, their skills based on uh, how, how the, the managers and the, the team coaches and stuff, how they select the team would be based on strengths and weaknesses and, and complementing each other. In this fourth quarter, you may not want to go it alone and, and I do recommend that you go it alone. Get a team. Now the team doesn't have to be big. It could be, a, it could be as simple as building a partnership relationship. So if you form a partnership with someone who has skills that you don't have but at a high level so that your skills can, can match and complement each other and you can still come out with great results and you can get results with even less effort because of the partnership. Or it could be a collaboration. You can collaborate with, with somebody who, who maybe has the same audience as you, right? And you may want to expose yourself to each other's audience so that you can ex expand your networks, right? So that is something to consider in this fourth quarter. Or it may be that you want to find somebody who can hold you accountable. You may want to have an accountability partner. That's a team member as well. Right, so if you want to form a, a team with one person that can actually hold you accountable, that can work as well in this fourth quarter. That can work as well. That can work as well. And also, you may want to form a team to do the menial task. Now, so you know these these um, administrative tasks and, and you know things of that nature that take a, take a lot of time. They, they look small and, and repetitive but they take up a lot of time, but they don't take a lot of skill and they don't, of, in and of themselves, they don't produce income. If you can visit like five or upwards and, or, or even locally, wherever you're watching this video, they may have people that have the skills to do video editing and 
you know your graphics or handle your social media or anything like that and that frees you up to be able to to really push and on the income producing activity so that you could come away with the win. Next takeaway is to get guidance. Now there's no team in the NBA, none whatsoever. If you know any, well, you'll be lying, right? There's no team in the NBA that does not have a coach. And not only one coach, they have several coaches. They have an entire coaching staff. Most teams have a coaching staff. You would have coaches that are experts in specific skill sets right so or the individual players they would have mentors so they they would have the you know the, the basketball players that would have gone before them that that they look up to and that they emulate you might hear that that um kobe looks like jordan when he plays and and he he may have taken some kind of mentorship where jordan would have passed on some of his knowledge some of his wisdom to kobe and kobe would have um, passed on to someone else and there's the whole mentorship of it uh, among the players. So I say that to say many of us flatly refuse to invest in ourselves and what I mean by that is by paying for coaching because we don't see the value of having a coach. Now if NBA players, NBA teams have so many coaches, I just say eh? we in the fourth quarter, it may be time to consider hiring a coach somebody who could hold you accountable somebody who has the results that you want to achieve you know they would have done it before and they can share with you what they did to get to that point so that is something to definitely consider hiring a coach i during my recent career online i have hired uh, two coaches and the value i see I will not hesitate to hire another coach when it becomes necessary because it will become necessary because I'm always learning, I'm always growing and there would be some time that I would need that coaching, that mentorship. So it might be something to consider in this fourth quarter that you, you it might be time to hire a coach or seek out a mentor, seek out a mentor. One thing I learned is that you don't just go and ask somebody to hand you their skills that they would have spent years to acquire right you you have to earn it especially for mentors you know just ask them to pick their brain and things like that right from what i'm learning mentors they are willing to help but you have to show that you you wouldn't waste their knowledge waste their time so it is definitely something to consider in this fourth quarter like i said we do have a lot of time on the scoreboard see the scoreboard up there we don't have a lot of time on the scoreboard remaining, but we could still close out as champions. Speaking of coaches, if you want a chance to work more closely with me, you like what you're hearing so far, then I am going to leave the link to my calendar down below. Be sure to check it out, set up an appointment where we can have a one-on-one, -on -one where I can help you devise a playbook and we can see how else I can help or add value to what you have going on. Takeaway number five is to maintain a balance between defense and offense. Now, it reminds me of a time that I was playing for this basketball team. Now, we were amateurs back then and the team that we were playing against, they were a little bit more experienced than us. And I remember the coach saying something. He said, um, make sure and try, just try not to let them score. Just try not to let them score. And I was like, you know what this coach, boy? he don't give up on me already. <laughs> right? because it seemed that he had given up on us and his play his play for the entire game was for us to try to defend to just defend and try not to let them score and that was his play <laughs> right some coach eh? some coach and it was clear that he didn't feel that we had the skills to be able to execute offense and to actually score on this team so clearly he had given up already right so but I say that to say, you can't just win by just playing either or the other. They both have their parts to play and they are both equally important. So offense in business would be things like actively going out and campaigning, networking, prospecting, you know, getting in the field, getting in the field and hard selling. These, these things that take aggressive action. These are what you would term your offense activities. So things like 
um, launching. So all of these things I would consider as offense. So defensive activities, I would think, are the activities that you're using to retain what you already have, to retain the income that you already have, to retain the clients or customers that you already have. So things like um, trying to boost engagement and nurturing the relationships that you have with pre uh, present clients and customers, getting feedback from them and sitting back and strategizing. All of these are more defensive moves. Now, you can't choose either or, right? There has to be a balance because if you do too much offense in basketball and in business, right, you leave your backcourt exposed for the competition to get you and you have no nothing to, to fall back on. But if you run too much defense, then you're not gonna score, you're not gonna affect the scoreboard and the scoreboard is going to remain on zero, the time is going to be out and you will not get the results that you're looking for. So you need to maintain that balance between offense and defense. So if you're getting value, be sure to hit that subscribe button, click the notification bell for similar videos to this. I try to upload pretty regularly on this channel. So if the content songs and value songs like stuff that you'd be interested in then definitely subscribe and comment comment i love to hear you comment tell me something talk to talk to me talk to me come on all right be sure to leave a comment down below like and hit the notification bell so that you can be notified every time i drop a new video when i jump on this platform of youtube and the last point is decisiveness now i remember in this particular play now there were many players like this especially with lebron and congratulations to lebron and the la lakers for the win great champions i enjoyed watching the basketball all right so whoever watched it make sure and comment down below let me know what you thought what you felt about it so anyway the last point is decisiveness i remember in this play lebron he went up to score and he was blocked and he collected his own rebound and he, as we just say here, he wet the man, right? He, he dunked it on the man, right? Um, decisiveness, deciding, hey, this, the end of, 20, the, end of the quarter, at the, coming out of 2020, I am going to come out with the win. And you do everything possible to come out with that win. Once, once you determine the strategy, go for it. Right? Just do it. Just do it. No excuses. Don't make up any excuses. Just go for it. Decide. Everything hinges on a decision. So you make the decision to come out with the win and you're going to win. So what can I say? The majority of the year has already gone. The three quarters have already gone. Right? Ain't no use in looking back right now. Just look forward to quarter four and doing what is necessary to still come out on top. We battled the COVID, we battling COVID, we battling whatever else is the case, lockdowns and what an economic crisis. And you can still come out on top. Now, one of the things that are gonna, is gonna prevent you from coming out on top is imposter syndrome. So watch this video next on imposter syndrome and I'll see you in the next video.